Now, did you know that sometimes when you crack an egg open, you'll find two yolks inside the egg? We call that a double yolker. It's pretty rare. But the first step is to find a very big egg. And if you collect up a bunch of very big eggs, the probability that each one of those very big eggs has a double yolk in it is 25%. The question is, how many of these eggs do you have to crack before you'll get a double yolker? In mathematical terms, we're going to let x be the number of eggs cracked before finding a double yolker. And we're going to determine the probability distribution. So what's the probability that we get one on the first try? Well, that's really, really easy. Now, uh, a tree diagram. Traditionally with this, we use the letters P and Q. P represents success, getting one of these double yolkers. And we know the probability of that happening is 0 0.25. And that means that the probability of success is obviously the complement of that, which is 0 0.75. Now, the probability of getting it on our first try is just 0 0.25. Now, 0 0.25 is just the letter P, because P represents the probability of success. So P, which is 0 0.25. But what about the probability of uh, getting one on the second try? Well, I extend my tree diagram, but I only need to extend part of my tree diagram because I'm just considering the failure after the first attempt. Probability of success, probability of failure, 0 0.25, 0 0.75. So the probability of getting success after the second try is following Q and then P here. So it's 0 0.75 times 0 0.25, which is just P times Q. Now, the probability of getting it on our third try, we failed, we failed, and then our third try, we get a success. So 0 0.25. Now, for that branch to happen, it's 0 0.75 times 0 0.75 times 0 0.25. Now, 0 0.75 times 0 0.75 is the same as 0 0.75 squared. Now, 0 0.75 is just Q, the probability of failure. So what we have here is the probability of success times the probability of failure, but squared. Now, I'm not going to write all the numbers in here, but we're just going to focus on that. P times Q squared. Now the probability of four, I think you can see the pattern here, right? We've got another P here, a 0 0.25. And so that's gonna be Q times Q times Q, and then a P. So P times Q cubed. And then the next one's gonna be P times Q to the four. Now, what if it wasn't like the number five? What if it was just like some random number N? Well, that's gonna be P times q to the power of not n, but n minus 1. Because when it was 4, it was 3. When it was 3, it was 2. When it was 2, it was q to the power of 1. So it's p to the q, n minus 1. And that is a super fantastic formula for this geometric probability distribution. This is the big takeaway from this question. The formula for a geometric probability distribution is p x equals n equals probability of success p times probability of failure q to the power of n minus 1, where n is equal to 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot. The dot, dot, dot actually means that that goes on forever to infinity, because if you were a very unlucky person, you could keep cracking eggs forever and ever and ever, and it would go on forever and ever, at least in the, at least in the theoretical mathematical world, that is. Okay, that's the geometric probability distribution.